This right here is the Insta360 ONE X, the camera that got me into 360 action cameras. And this right here is the Insta360 ONE X2, my, my very favorite action camera of all time. But today we are taking a look at the brand new Insta360 ONE X3. Huh? No, no one? Oh, well, they got rid of the one. All right. Today we are taking a look at the brand new Insta360 X3. So right off the bat, let's take a look at this camera. Let's check out everything that's new physically with this camera from the One X2. You'll see that from this side of the camera, they are almost identical, but then turn them this way and you can already see some big differences. The X3 is a little bit fatter. The mic's redesigned, the speaker's redesigned. There's a power button that's just the same and check that button out right there. A quick menu button. I have said that all action cameras, especially waterproof action cameras like this, which this guy is waterproof down to 33 feet, they should have a quick switch button. Like on this one, I can't use that touch screen when I'm in the water. But on this one, uh, if I'm in the water, I can just use my quick menu button to cycle through those modes that I use most. We'll talk more about the quick button later in the video. Because on the other side, you're gonna see some big changes as well. Same thing, a redesigned mic up top, but check out out that door. This is a physical door on the camera now. It is no longer just uh, the flappy bit that, that kind of everyone has complained about, kind of one of these, these flappy doors where it, when it comes off, it's just being held on by like a little rubber piece. This is like a properly hinged door. It makes a very satisfying click when it's locked in. You know that your camera is waterproof, totally safe to jump in the water. That is a major upgrade for, for just the use experience of this camera. And then we'll one more step down from there, you'll see that it is also a redesigned battery door. And because the battery door is integrated into the battery, uh, this is gonna be a pro and a con because for One X2 users that wanna buy a One X3 also, know your One X2 batteries no longer fit uh, in this camera. It's a, it's a new battery. So they moved from the old batteries, which were 1630 milliamps, and this guy is now an 1800 milliamps. So a pro for anyone that's buying the X3, but for people like me that have a bunch of One X2 batteries laying around, uh, you will not be able to use them on the X3. But again, awesome for X3 buyers because you've you got a bigger battery in there, which you are going to need because because I save I save the best side for last. Check check that out. A 2.29 inch touchscreen. This is the biggest screen that Insta360 has ever put on one of their devices, and let me tell you, it is it is so good. It's super bright, super reactive, like. It feels very DJI-esque, like in the GoPro versus DJI touchscreen world, it's much more DJI than it is GoPro. Going in, changing settings, moving around, just kind of making those adjustments, it is it is so much better. I mean, on this little guy, favorite camera, but man, that touchscreen, uh, not great. It was just so, so little and circular, so it kind of made things tricky. With this guy, 2.29 inches, this thing is huge. And then below that big touch screen is the fourth microphone, the shutter button here, and a lens switcher button there, which a lens switcher button on a 360 camera, why, why would you need that? Let's find out in these specs for the X3. The X3 films that same amazing 5.7K video with active HDR, totally canceling out the stick. This is kind of the thing that, that this camera makes everyone go, wait, like how, how are you shooting that? And even though more and more people know about 360 cameras, most people that I still run into when I show them this footage, they go, I, I don't get it, how is that happening? And that's a fun trick. This thing also has that same amazing flow state stabilization for just like ridiculously smooth shots no matter what you're doing. All these action cameras are using digital stabilization. So they're taking a larger frame and then cropping into a smaller frame and then they're basically stabilizing that inner rectangle inside of a big rectangle. But with Insta360, they are stabilizing a rectangle inside of a sphere. So it's kind of unlimited stabilization with 360 degree horizon lock. So even when the camera is going all wibbly wobbly, your shot, it, it stays perfectly upright. And in the X3, we now have a half inch sensor, which means improved image quality, improved dynamic range, and just all around better video. Because with that half inch sensor, this, 
this camera has a brand new trick. See, I've always said that if you are filming yourself, you should use a 360 camera. And if you're filming someone else, you should use like a normal traditional action camera. But now, now with this camera, you can do both because of a brand new 4K single lens mode. So I can go in there, select single lens mode up top and flip to video. And now you can see that it's filming through my front lens in horizontal view or 16 by nine. But I can easily tap in here, switch that to portrait mode nine by 16. And then I'll be able to film a video just like that. No reframing, no post, just just filming right inside the camera and getting a final video file. But then I can tap in here and I can switch to my rear screen, which is kind of more of like a vlog mode. If I wanted to walk around and film a video of myself, filming this way, I can see the screen, I can point to things behind me because I can see the screen. I can, I can do that really simply with that 4K single lens mode. And this is filming a final file. So it's filming in nine by 16. I can't change that in post. I also don't have horizon stabilization anymore. I have some stabilization, but not that 360 lock. So if I turn the camera, um, the, the video turns also. Now, one caveat of this mode right now is that if I'm recording and I wanna switch lenses, I'm gonna switch to the front lens or I wanna switch to the back lens, I don't have that option. Even if I use the lens switcher button, it, it won't switch while recording. So you choose either front lens or rear lens. Once you hit record, you are locked into that while recording, which does feel like something that, that they might update later. Now let's jump to another brand new mode called me mode. And me mode is, it's kind of a hybrid of 360 and single lens where where you're shooting one direction, but you're using both lenses. The me mode is for when you wanna film yourself, almost like 4K single lens mode, but you wanna film yourself, it's gonna use both lenses and it's only gonna film this way and it's gonna cancel out this pole. So again, kind of a, a hybrid of single lens shooting, but it's using the 360 to stitch the two images together and only film in one direction. Now, the nice thing there is that instead of having to reframe 20 minutes of footage where maybe I was just walking along and it was always pointing at me, I never wanted the camera to look anywhere else, only at me, again, I wanted that pole removed, um, that's a, pretty slick mode, no reframing in post. The one caveat in this mode is that you can only go up to 1080p, 60 frames a second. Again, because it's using both lens, it is still stitching those things together. So, so your final outputted file is gonna be 1080. But super useful to be able to film quick clips, export them fast to your phone and, and post them. Again, no reframing during the me mode process. Next, let's take a look at the photos coming out of the X3 kind of absurd. The new half inch sensor is giving us 72 megapixel images, which, um, what? That is, that is bananas, which means that, that that 72 megapixel globe, even after you reframe it, you are getting a massive, massive file size with a ton of detail, really, really high resolution. The exact specs will depend on how much you, you crop in or how wide you go. The wider you go, the more megapixels your image has, the tighter you go, the less megapixels your image will have. Because again, 72 megapixels for the entire globe and then you're just kind of choosing a chunk out of that photo. But another banana spec on this thing is that it can do time lapses in 8K. Again, using that half inch sensor, using those 72 megapixel photos to create time lapses, the final file is 8K, which is so rad because you can now do time lapses on this thing and get that really cool zoom in or zoom out effect and still have 4K footage. Now, the last thing to look at on this camera is a totally redesigned studio app on your computer and iOS and Android app on your phone. I think I'm gonna make a whole separate video on, on kind of my workflow for the X3, how I'm getting the images and videos and hyperlapses that I am out of this camera. But a few of my favorite features in the studio app are the deep track subject tracking, which is, is kind of bonkers. Instead of sitting there and having to reframe something, the entire video, maybe you shot a 20 minute clip of yourself skateboarding, and now you have to go in and manually reframe that. No, no more, because deep track just draw a box around you, hit start tracking and does it by itself. You can go get a coffee or go to the bathroom, do whatever you need to do, 20 minutes later, come on back and it's done. And then another one of my favorite features is taking real time footage and turning it into hyperlapse footage. Because you film the video in real time, so you have that real time footage, but in the app, I can turn that into a super stabilized hyperlapse video 
And if I want, I can even add motion blur. So the motion blur was not there in the shot when I filmed it, but in post, I can add motion blur to just give this really cool, very speedy feel to the video. And there's a hundred other features I could talk about in the studio app or mobile app. Shot Lab is, could be a whole video on its own right there. But Insta360 is working really hard to provide software that works with these video files to help you get footage fast or take your footage and turn it into reframed footage fast. And that's, that's helpful. That's the hardest part for most people with 360 cameras. So adding in that 4K mode, adding in that me mode, adding in the ability to do deep track, things like that, being able to just shoot with this camera and then use that footage quickly. That's, that's what Insta360 does best. Okay, so what are my final thoughts on the Insta360 X3? Pros and cons. The pros, if you are looking to buy a 360 camera, you've been on the fence, I would say 100% buy this camera. It's, it's amazing. Brand new half inch sensor. You've got that giant 2.29 inch touchscreen, the 4K mode, the me mode. You get the 72 megapixel photos, the 8K time lapses. This camera is super, super impressive. And if you've been on the fence about 360, now's the time to jump over the fence or pull the trigger. Whatever metaphor you'd like to use, go buy this camera. But to also address the cons of this camera, uh, what will people complain about with this camera? I think the very first thing is that it's still 5.7K. And the thing about that 5.7K is that 5.7K is the entire sphere. So when you reframe in that final footage, it only comes out 1080. Now I take 1080 footage and I put it into my videos and I upscale it to 4K all the time and it looks pretty dang good. But I do think that that's gonna be people's main complaint on this camera. Now, this is a, a very small camera that's shooting two lenses, stitching internally and the whole thing's water proof and it can fit in my pocket. So for me, I, I understand the limitations of processors that are this size. But again, that that will for sure be people's main complaint about this camera. And then the other complaints that I'm sure we're going to hear are is the audio quality. Now this thing has four microphones on there for 360 audio, but it's still an action camera and people I think expect more from action cameras micro like look, it's just a yellow hole right there. That is one of the microphones and it's a waterproof microphone. So yeah, I think I think expectations are always important to keep in mind. Here's what the audio sounds like on the Insta360 X3. I would imagine, I would imagine that it's probably pretty on par with most action cameras. Again, there's four microphones all around it to, to really do the best job trying to isolate my voice, but, but right now there's no wind, there's not a lot else going on. What if we go to a situation that's that's a whole lot more noisy. Here's an audio test in super noisy conditions. We've got wind, we've got waves, we've got a rock beach with just tumbling rocks. It is very loud. How can you hear me at the beach on the Insta360 X3? Now they do offer a audio adapter for this guy. We just pop off that door right there, grab this guy there specifically designed for the X3 that just slots in right there with a little hook on top. And then I could take something like, like this little piece that's designed for the Insta360. You put this through there, then we screw that onto there. Then we grab a wireless mic pack like the Rode Wireless Go 2, and then take this cable here, plug that in there, and boom, check that setup out. So Rode Wireless Go 2 into the audio adapter, and you'll notice it is going to hide in the stitch line. So this is still a 360 camera. The pole is deleted and so is all of this mess on the side here. You now get Rode Wireless Go 2 audio quality in a, uh, in a 360 camera. And then once again, here is the Rode Wireless Go 2 kit uh, hooked up right here as a lav. I've got the windscreen on there and it's hooked up to the audio jack. How does it sound? It is super windy. The waves are, are nice and big and there is a, a rock beach with rocks tumbling. How does the Insta360 X3 sound with the Rode Wireless Go 2 plugged into the side of it? And then once again, here is the Rode Wireless Go 2 kit. Uh, hooked up right here as a lav. I've got the windscreen on there and it's hooked up to the audio jack. How does it sound? It is super windy. So that, that obviously helps a ton on the audio front. If you do want good audio, pick up the Rode Wireless Go 2, pick up that adapter, pick up the plate to hold it all, and, and you can have really good audio on your 360 camera. And then the last thing I think people are gonna complain about, and I will also, is, is the lenses. The lenses on there are still not protected in any way. So if you scratch your lens, uh, you still have to send it in for replacement. I would love for Insta360 to come up with, with maybe a glass element, like an actual glass element 
that could screw on there in some way and be the lens protection. And if I was to scratch it, I could have three or four more in my bag, pop it on there, screw it back on and be ready to rock. I think that would solve most people's complaints with 360 cameras and, and those lenses being so fragile. You can put on the plastic lens covers. Again, though, you lose a lot of quality by putting plastic over your glass lens, but I would say for sure still do it. I would rather have slightly lower quality because I'm shooting through a plastic element than, than get a scratch lens and just be done for the day. But that is it, that is our camera. That is the Insta360 X3. This One X2 has been my favorite action camera for a very long time. Now, just using this thing for two weeks, it uh, it's officially replaced it, minus the fact that I've only got one battery for this and like seven batteries for the X2. So I need to get some more batteries for the X3, but what do you guys think? Do you already have a 360 camera and you're saying to yourself, uh, should I upgrade or not? Is that the question that you're debating? Or are you in that camp where you haven't bought a 360 camera yet and you're thinking, maybe maybe this is the first one that finally makes me take the jump? Let me, uh, let me know you guys' thoughts down in the comments and I'll see you soon. The screen is so dope. If I don't get a screen protector, I'm for sure gonna jack this thing up. Insta360, please make screen protectors for this thing. Even the sound it makes. I like, I like the sound that... Sometimes cameras can, can make weird sounds, like it, it sounds too robiotic. Robiot. <laughs> fell down on my skateboard while filming this whole thing and I, I thought I scratched the lens, but I didn't. But I thought I did. I kind of gave up my elbow in sacrifice of saving the lens. No one. I feel like, I feel like that's gonna cause confusion. There was the 1X and then the 1X2 and now, now it's just X3. That's weird.